welcome to another episode of the Macadamia Show. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be invited onto an organic macadamia farm and while I did a video about organic farms before and basically claimed that it was impossible and I knew that I'd probably be contacted by an organic macadamia farmer at some point probably to abuse me instead I got contacted by Bruce Chester who not only welcomed me onto his farm as a friend but has um, offered to show me all of his uh, all of his secrets, or at least he says he's only got two minutes of them. I think we're going to be a bit longer than that, Bruce, don't you? <laughs> we can only try, Daniel. We can, we can only try. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was very gracious of you to invite me on. It's and um, Because I, I was a bit cynical about organic farming, and, and um, I inherited a farm myself that was biodynamic and just not performing. So to see one that does perform would be absolutely mind opening and and there's a lot of people who watch the channel who assume that it can't be done um and to some extent there's there's challenges with it but i'd love to go through your farm with you here which is um in fernley yep. and uh right in the middle of macadamia royalty really just looking around there's there's some i don't know what that farm is next to you but there's other macadamia farms i've been driving past in Nashua, some of them cop some storm damage. I'm I'm not immune from the storm damage. I you've, can assure you. You've got some over over there. Yeah. And I, I heard Nashua got hit, um, but um, branches down. Branches down. Nature's pruning, I suppose you'd call it. Um, but yeah. Hey, you got to take it on the chin that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <You know. laughs> Any whole trees pulled up, or you no? You're I've lucky, lost lucky. major parts. There's one down over there that is basically going to be a wind sheet to attract things in the future. So it is going to be doomed in the long term. But we'll wait and let nature take its course for that. Right. Now, Bruce, you're not a native farmer by any stretch any more than I am. You used to be the head of operations at Channel 9. Well, operations manager, yeah. I... And, and, and and then then had a tree change. What was what inspired that? Um, basically, um, I can put it in one easy sentence. I can always make more money. I will never make more time, and I value my time greatly. So uh, it was a fairly simple change. Um, let me add, I've been working flat out like a lizard drinking for many, many moons. Right. But you did this very early in life too, didn't you? you were... I did. I was only 30. Yeah. Um, was... You got you got tired of the city a lot quicker than I did. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, um, there was opportunity. Yeah. And I wanted to seize that opportunity, um, like most things, stupidly in a lot of them. But anyway, I, yeah. I did want to seize it. And... Oh, was it macadamias you were interested in specifically? Specifically, specifically. Right. Now, I mean, this was when they were just. Is a bit. It was the nineteen eighties, right? What yes, year? it was. What I year? bought in eighty seven, and I turned organic in eighty eight, and I had the choice. I had a mentor, a lovely lady called Patty Jung, and she's well known in your neck of the woods, or was, um, and she was one of my mentors here. Right. Uh, and basically, I was at the choice of. I did not want to farm conventionally. I bought a thing of superside, I was, um, which is a heinous broad spectrum yeah. insecticide. I've seen it in old manuals. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that basically, when I read the label of that, and basically it said, don't eat, drink or smoke for at least an hour before you go out and spray, wear a complete covering from the head to the foot, don't eat, drink or smoke for at least two hours after spraying and yeah. either throw your complete head uh, um, thing away, complete covering away, or wash it at least four times. Have, have two showers. Basically, that's what it said. Yeah. And I went, it's I want to live here. It's, it's ridiculous, for yeah. For Christ's sake, yeah. yeah. I, How I can mean, you say this is healthy you, living if that's you, what you, you have to do? There's going to be a better way. Yeah. And I'd been exposed to biodynamics to a couple out at Rosebank called Mick and Liz O'Shea. Yeah. And Patty and Chris Jung exposed me to organics. And the difference for them in me to make my mind up yeah. was with biodynamics, you basically got to make all of your own inputs yeah. with organics you can go out and buy certified things and bring them into the farm certified. yeah okay yeah that was a simple decision yeah and it wasn't mind-bending at all and it has paid 
dividends yeah. so beautifully it is a joke. Yeah. The um I mean in eighty seven the macadamia craze was absolutely in swing, wasn't it? I mean, we had cattle farms being bought up and planted out willy-nilly with macadamias. You yes. had the retirement crowd who were doing it for informal superannuation. Correct. Um, CSR had paved the way up in Danoon. They had, and, and they knew at this stage, here you go, here's why macadamias, okay? And there's yeah. two reasons, for me anyway, all right? First up, it was explained by a guy called Keith Ainsbury, who was the head of the Macadamia Society. Yeah. Okay, and he goes, listen, if you want to farm for yourself, you grow animals. Right. If you want to farm for your kids, you grow trees and fruit and things like that. Yeah. If you want to farm for your grandchildren, you grow nuts. Simple and easy as that. That was and his theory. I took that on board. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, but it, does it strike you as weird? Why, why did a big agribusiness like CSR start an industry and then it turned into mums and dads. Normally it's the other way around, isn't it? Normally the big agribusiness comes in and takes over little farms. Go the history of the macadamia for a second. Yep. You have this beautiful bubble nut if you're in Queensland. Yeah, yeah. That was the, that was the, that was the Aboriginal, that was the Aboriginal word for it. Have we got? Bauple nut. Mount so, Bauple. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So um, you get a fellow called Robert McAdam who goes over the University of Hawaii with a few strains of all of this. Yeah. And he genetically crafts a commercial crop out of this Australian bush food, okay? Yeah. Now that commercial crop had to be reasonably homogenous in size so that machinery can operate it. Yep. It had to have a thinner shell than some of those thick and bubble nut ones, okay? Yeah. And it also had to have a certain sweetness of flavour. So those were the criteria that formed into what's now known as the macadamia nut. Yeah. And Hawaii promoted a beautiful... Anybody in the 80s told you that Hawaii was the home of the macadamia. Macadamia. Okay. Which, which they'd sort of earned yeah. by then. It was given birth in Hawaii. Aren't it? Let's, yeah. make, let's make no... Yeah. Commercially speaking. Yeah. Let's make well, they, no had vision. they had vision that we didn't. But, but, but then we caught up. And, and the 80s was, seems to me, the decade when it exploded in the Northern Rivers. It did. Yeah. In, and, and so you came in, you, did you plant these? No. You, right. They were three to four years old when I came through, right. or when I purchased, and they were pretty sick. There'd been cows roaming in the shop and everything like that. Right. Um, I was also double, um, these are 12 metres by six metres, okay? My okay. rows being 12 metres. Yep. They were originally all planted six metres by six metres from about the next row down. And so did you like remove some? Oh, you we took them out, yeah. We right. took them out, chipped them up and spread the stuff underneath. So right. 12 by six, it's interesting because you, you, you must have pruned, surely. You, yeah. you, have you pruned it to any degree? Um, I'm No. Um, in fact, I'm at the moment... I'm upskirting them. Yes. Oh, that's probably the wrong term. Well, you're skirting um, them. In today's yeah. lingo. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I am, okay. I'm skirting them up. There you go. There's a better way. Yes. I'm skirting them up so that a mechanical harvester can get through here yeah. without damaging these lower limbs. Yeah. Um, so it's a challenging no, task. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I, I, see, I see what you mean. Um, but so, and in total, your farm is about... Uh, is it about 600 trees or something? You say, um, or? Slightly less than 500, I think, I wound up with once I'd taken out every second row. Right. It originally started out at a bit over 800 trees. I think it was 880 or 890. Yep. So, yeah, I reduced my field but expanded everything. Because when you look at it, okay, if this baby this size oh, is yeah. feeding an area underneath it, it requires three things. It requires yeah. the food that we talk about with nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, etc. Yeah. The water that's required and the light. And the sunlight. I was going to say, is required. right, given, given any number of square metres, you've only got so much sunlight and how many trees you spread it over. Thank you. I mean... And the obvious way... So, so long as the tree will bear a crop that is commensurate with that, you yeah. have have fewer trees. Yeah. Well, yeah. obviously, and they always surrounded everything with windbreaks. 
Yes. And you could see the wind breaks, apart from being usually a rat highway into your trees. Yeah. Um, quite apart from that, they would shield your light and take the food and water. Yeah. Now, this we, drain, we're actually standing. This is a V drain. Is where yeah. my wind breaks were along here. Right. And what, being what? on this slope, I have a huge erosion problem. Ah, uh, yes. So, I put in the drain to try and relieve the water process through there. Okay. Now, um, the year that Cyclone Debbie hit Lismore, um, well, that's I a while lost back. an enormous amount of soil. Yeah. And I abandoned harvesting for, firstly, I lost most of my nuts down in the very bottom. Sure. Um, and secondly, it was fairly futile. There was so much damage and everything. But the soil replacement became imperative. And I fortunately heard of a government grant, New South Wales government grant, for damage from Cyclone Debbie in sugarcane and macadamias. Okay, I don't know why we were selected, but wow. by golly gosh, you can't help good luck, Could, can you? Maybe someone had some political connections. I love it. Yeah. Okay, I just yeah. love it. Yeah, right? yeah. But anyway, you got it. I got it. Um, and it didn't pay for labour or anything like that, but it paid for materials. I got 160 tonnes of... 40% soil, garden soil. Yeah. 50% macadamia mulch soil mix. Husk and stuff, yeah. Um, yeah, and it was a special blend from down at Go Grow at Ballina um, that they put together and they called it their macadamia mix. Yeah. So it had the weight along with the soil to for me to actually have some balance. Yeah. Um, there was 5% chicken manure and 5% basalt dust. I'm a firm believer in basalt dust. Really? Um, okay. Oh, absolutely love basalt dust. Yeah. Um, so that was my mix. And I mean, it's interesting. I, I'm not seeing any root exposure here. As far as I can tell. I, I can take you to a tree down there where I noticed some yesterday when I was cleaning up the storm down. No, no, but in general, in terms yeah. of just general management, on a slope, it's a challenge to avoid root exposure, but you seem to have done it fairly I, well. I filled in the gaps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And what you meant, that mustn't have been just after Cyclone Debbie. Um, it was within six months after Cyclone Debbie. But, but, but more recently? Have, do you have to keep doing it? No. Why not? Well, I haven't because found the ground, yet. ground my, cover keeps my it there mowing now. Mowing practices through summer, particularly. Yeah. Okay, like when you don't care for your, for your I like to call it the deck. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, well, well it, is, to... it is really, yeah. 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 So, basically, look at all the leaf fall, which is only going to clog up the harvester. The more I can chop those babies up and any sticks and everything like that, I'm making, A, harvesting easier for when the time comes around. Yes. But look at what I'm providing underneath the trees. Yeah. Just, you know, this is just gorgeous to participate in, yeah. to be feeding in this fashion. Uh, and in the greater scheme of things, I'm keeping cover down from rats and snakes. Yeah. <laughs> in the yeah, greater no. scheme of things, it's no, lovely, it's, you know? it's a decent hunting ground for owls too, if you've got them. Oh, yeah. love it, yeah. love it. I've yeah. had my tawny frog mouse, you know, play around. You get things every now and again. I had a resident wallaby for a while. Yeah. Okay, I used to call him Cadbury because basically he was so deep brown. It was just a joke. Yeah, yeah. But you wind up with them. Um, I've, I've got an echidna that I call Porsche. We won't explain the difference um, about why she's called Porsche. No, oh, don't worry. In the of no, 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 no. That's that's all fine. <laughs> that's all fine. But so tell me, look, what what variety trees are these? Have you ever found predominantly three four fours? Right. There's five oh eights. There's H twos, and the trees like this one. Yep. Okay, is a two four six. Right. All right. I can I can tell this was a spreading variety of some kind because it it doesn't have a dominant central leader and so that kind of that kind of does make sense but yeah the 508s were a big variety in hawaii and um they're still around in the northern rivers i think they were only planted in the northern rivers they and were. they did okay yeah yeah so so hang on three four four five oh eight h Two, some four, h six, and a couple of h2s a yeah. couple of h2s okay now from i guess we'll have to get into the organic farmer's perspective on pests in particular Certainly. but but let's start with feeding um, compared to a conventional farmer, how do you feed and when do you feed? Okay, yeah. I feed religiously, okay? Right. Out of these 500 trees... We can I go get, for a walk in the shade if you yeah, like, get you out of the sun, you, then, get you out of the sun, you yeah, poor thing. Yeah. And probably the glare in the camera. Yeah. Um, 
but basically I get um, the 25 meters square meters in a load yep. on a truck of what I get of chicken manure of chook yeah okay and yep. I get two loads of that for these trees only okay okay every three to four years I will get um, 14 to 15 ton depends on what trucks take okay yeah yeah of basalt dust which is about a 19 mil chip and that gets spread over the whole of the place and the what's it, what's it rich in the the Phosphate. basalt dust yeah. is actually it's remineralizing my soils yeah um they're your first to leach out okay yeah no that's true but but which minerals are you looking for in particular um, is it I think they're all contained in either basalt or granite. Uh, yeah. Anything that you want is in those two. Suspect there's rock phosphates in it. Basically, rocks. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, but um, boron must be something. Boron is here. You go. Here's where the magical mystery tour lies. Yeah. A direct correlation with a boron deficiency, and when you eradicate it, yeah. there is organic boron. Organic boron. Yeah. Yes, there is. Okay. Have you, have, do you use that? Yes. Or? Once every three to five years as my soil tests tell me right i generally run in with a ph that's between six and 6.5 those are my parameters okay. yep and it's pretty specifically solid there yeah so because i'm not adding um acidic fertilizers okay i yeah. don't have to then counteract with lime or and my brother who used to own the place that we could see in the distance yeah he was always on this Treadmill, as I like to call it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. You know, you're giving the trees the NPK that everybody says that you should. Yeah. Um, most people miss out on those minerals with the basalt, right. I am right. assuring you. And but ch chicken manure is somewhat alkaline, isn't it? Um, so, yes, it is. So probably sufficient for your needs too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And when you add to it with chopped up mulch, I mean, you yeah. know, you, you look at look at. No, no, the trees the trees look healthy to me. I mean, in terms of the feeding, I, I don't see a deficiency. I mean, the leaves in some respects are small, but it depends very much on the variety. And there's the nuts that I can see are big enough. They're like they're normal. I mean, I couldn't – if you told me this was a conventionally farmed macadamia orchard, I'd say it's, you know – Hmm. I wouldn't know. No, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, it seems seems fine to me. Yeah, but the um, so this is a twelve meter spacing, effectively, where the branches have come in to meet in the middle to oh. an, to an extent. Have a look. Talk about yeah. the field light. Yeah, well, well, it gets getting through, and you've got ground cover. Do you do you promote any ground cover? Yes, I do. What What do you like? I see. Oh, sorry, as in that promotion. Yeah. Um. No, I just I buy um, seed. Yeah. And I'll just wander around. Throw like, some this around. This season is perfect. Last season wasn't. No. You know? No. Um. And I had to pick my time after Cyclone Debbie when I put all the soil through yeah. to try and get the grass to grow. Yep. <coughs> The limitation is... There's some really native ground light. cover here, I've noticed. Yeah. yeah. It's just light is what's going to determine your ground cover. Right. Um, and as I take off branches, okay, like you can see this one straight down in the row below us where there has been a branch that's come down in the yeah, storm. a big one. Okay. As I take off branches that are sticking out like the one that's remaining to the right, yes, um, that enables the mechanical harvester to get through. Because yeah. here they go vertically, okay? Because of my spacing. And oh, the harvesters can, can, up, can, can come, come up, up vertically. The rows. Oh, right. It is so much better than across. Yeah. And as you know, going across a hill, you're always slip sliding. You've got this... Yeah, monotony. It's great hip exercise, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? Especially isn't it? when mowing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but but now getting back to the feeding, the chook manure you put down in what in spring? Yes. Um, but, and but do you keep doing it, or, or? No, I'm, I I will go a repeat performance in December if I can. Right now, chook manure is very hard to secure. Yeah. And this year I haven't gone for the second bash. Right. Um, only because. It is. I know that there are people waiting on deliveries, okay, for their first for the year. Right. Now, I've always taken on the philosophy that I don't want to be putting down any manure on the base 
past really the 1st of December if I've got my my choice. Because of harvesting or just because, because of the Because of plant? harvesting. And, uh, right. Commencing the end of February, okay? Yeah. Um, but basically, I don't need... I, and I got... I had I used to have sheep here. I used to have goats here. Right. Okay. Um, and now um, the sheep would raise through here, but the Macadamia Society went no. At no, one point, you cannot you have can't feces do it. on the orchard for board. three months before you harvest. Yeah, no, that's still a rule. So and that's what I took on board. The nut processors will and still tell yep. you that too. Yeah. yeah. So okay, well then there's those two feeds in general. Um, Organic bore or something like that every few yes. years. Um, it's when your pH tells you that you need it. Yeah. Okay, it's going to tell you if your boron's low. You can't overdo boron. I believe it's used in ant killer too. Yeah. Um, oh, that's just standard but, sodium yeah. borate, borax. Yeah. 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 But you can, you know, you basically, you can poison your soil with it. I know that, you know. Yeah. Well, you can get boron poisoning. I, I yeah, and, and, and certainly a, another couple of people I speak to think that agronomists figures for boron for macadamias is a, are a little bit too conservative if you actually the tree can actually handle a lot more than 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 they say it does but look you know who knows i mean i i, I just do trace element feeds with it every so often but it's part of the the feed i do but the um the, the real reason i i guess i focused on those fertilizer questions is that the the small grower of the year for the ams is a guy called peter fraser he's next door to me oh okay he's getting six and a half tons a hectare and he doesn't do any chemical feeding at all right he's doing complete manure base but um he also switched to cow so is there is there an aversion to cow my only aversion to cow is you bring in so many weeds Right. Okay, that's right. the it's... only aversion that I have. Yep. All right, whereas the chicken manure, I don't, you know, you get a bit of chick, chick weed here and there. Okay? Sure, sure. Um, which is really frustrating for a harvester. Yes, However, it's, 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 that, that stuff yes. is dreadful. Yeah. Oh, gee whiz, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I've, I've come across it. <laughs> Gets in the finger wheels and gunks it up. <laughs> and... <laughs> just However, has this natural ability to do that. Yeah. 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 But no, that's the only aversion I have to um cow manure, but it's it's I hey, if I, if I can't get chicken manure one year, I'm telling you I wouldn't hold back on the cow manure. You wouldn't. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Look, have a look is at Is chicken this place getting there. harder to get or is it or is it because where where did it come from? It didn't come from battery hens, did it? I wouldn't be at all surprised. I think yeah. it's a case of supply trying to keep up with demand. Yes. And you get it from wherever you can. Everybody's going through this with Christmas coming and yeah. the supply distribution problems. Yeah. Fact of life, okay? No, I can tell you, you know, I've got eco growth which is, you know, relatively relatively rock based and that sort of stuff, but their supply problems are massive and I still haven't got my October feed, Oops. you know, and it's December. So, Thank you. So, I mean, it's coming and it'll be applied later on and I'll end up applying it in the harvest season just to replenish the tree's nutrients. But, yeah, I mean, my first lot was pelletised chicken manure. I've, I go pelletised. I'm um, with and, you in and, that, the dynamic liftery type thing. Yeah. Okay. It's all silica booster in my case because it, it has some... Um, a diatomaceous earth in it as well as chook manure and it's organic certified so you know and i don't do it because it's organic certified but it's a damn good product thank you and and i'm wishing i had gone most basically all manure based because if my neighbor can get six and a half tons a hectare i mean that's like well, South, it's like he's South African or something. Here, here you go, here you go. Okay, so, if yeah. you want to pull some some logic into it, and I, I have the same right as every other human on earth, yeah. and that is the right to be wrong. Yeah. Okay, yep. yeah, you, and right? me, you and me both. So yep. if you give it that, if you look at the macadamia as the way I understand it, it, it occurs in nature. It grows on the southern side of a rainforest, yep. happily in nature. And it's a second-storey tree. It, precisely. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So it loves mulch. Yeah. It absolutely it loves adores mulch. Okay. Yeah. And it makes plenty itself. Uh, thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, basically, if you're going to sit there and go, okay, well, let me put... Gee whiz, let's call it um, ammonium nitrate or something like that yep. so, so that I can get some nitrogen, okay? We've, we've introduced something that really isn't 
not naturally in the tree's diet yes. and it does have a lingering effect in the soil namely at the very least it is going to acidify your ph over time okay yeah. and this soil is naturally acid anyway so it doesn't really need the help it doesn't yeah and there's a lot of soils i mean you 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 run into when you're trying to correct your acidification you've yeah. got a choice of either lime or dolomite in most instances yeah. and that only comes down to whether it is it aluminium or magnesium? Deficiency? Magnesium, yeah, yeah, for dolomite. Okay. We should keep walking, but Please. but the um, yeah. So that's well, that's a okay. Well, it's a decent nutrient profile that you that you offer, and there's it seems like what two, hopefully two big feeds a year, and it's slow release. So of course it then keeps releasing through the season. Thank you. Um, I guess yeah. Now comes the difficult part of the discussion, which is which is pests. Now. Um, there's another video involving you and I'll put a link to it in the show description where I think you said that you spray for lace bug, which is I guess the first pest that shows up in the year. Okay. Do you, is, is that? Spraying is, uh, is the, the, I don't actually spray for any particular bug at all. The only spray that gets used, and that's only in the last two years, yep. is for our dreaded weevil. Okay. And as we've said, it's not even a killer spray, it's an infertile spray. Yeah, okay. but that, that's, you're talking about endoxicarb, which is, yeah. which, is the, which is the spray that makes the bug, well, it stops it breeding. Yes. It's the, it, in fact, it's the same ingredient you get in mortine cockroach baits. It's the same. It's the same right. one in ha household cockroach baits. You just oh. look at that. Look at a packet. Doesn't that make sense? When you're next in Woolies, yeah, have a look. I mean, it's obviously encased in a plastic case, but yeah. it's used in people's households. But it's not organic, is it? No, no, no. 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 no so, it's so, not. so it's, to an extent, it's actually a biological spray. Yeah, is the way it was described to me. Yeah, it is. Now, it, it is bioactive, and it doesn't kill non-target pests. In correct. Fact, it doesn't kill anything other than just the weevil because it's specific yeah but, but any spraying i have done yeah. in the past yeah. okay yep yeah. um is with garlic oil yep yeah. um predominantly garlic oil i have used chili and coffee okay right. and on the citrus but they don't kill the weevil no no the, the, the weevils are nasty the weevil's actually going to operate and that's what you've got to try and stop yeah okay and there's no pre predator I'm going to tell you this is an observation only, Daniel, okay? Yeah, Please, yeah. I'm not scientific. No, 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 that's the fine. The theory of Bruce Chester, it's like a repeat of a Monty Python, okay. the theory of Ann Elk. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. However, I, I don't promote any sprays or anything like that, but endosulfan met its demise a few years ago. Well, that's DDT. Prior well, to endosulfan meeting its demise, yeah, okay, yeah. there was no Sagascus weevil. Yeah. Now, whether there is a relationship in something that was controlling it in nature or whether it's something that has evolved because of that non-use of something is a whole different tale yeah. and I don't go there. But it really hit the industry hard oh, in the geez. space of about three years, didn't Oof, it? Exactly yeah. right. Just, just before I came onto the scene, I mean, Indoxicarb in my first season, which is 2019, that was this new thing. Yeah. It only had a temporary permit. Thank you. I think it's still only a temporary permit. I wouldn't be it, at all surprised. It, it, it's, um, so it, and it works. We found out that it absolutely works. Um, I can tell you in yield yeah. that it works. So, yeah, you, you were mentioning um, you had a bad yield the year before the, this. The, yeah, the year that that video was taken on me, the, the year, that year, which was 2019, I only got to harvest about 200 kilos of nuts, not quite even. Which, which is crop year, failure. Which is absolutely It's crop failure. I mean, yeah, yeah. in terms of what you spent, yeah. it's a dead and loss. And everybody yeah. around me was using your endoxicarb, yeah. okay? And they're tickety-boo. Right. Um, so the so, next year you did use it. Oh, I did. Yeah. I did. And um, that's it. I won't allow any other pesticide to be mixed in with it, as most farms will. Yeah. That I don't, okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm guilty. I, a, I mixed it, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you see, my spray regimes, okay, yeah. and yes, they have been, but they're not poison chemicals. I spray 
liquid fertilizer, mm. okay, mainly it's seaweed derivatives. Sure. Um, it's through here. Um, I haven't for a few years, but basically in the drier years when it's harder for the soil, for the nutrients to come into the tree from the soil, in theory, yeah. I'll give them some additions with the with the trees. So, and, okay, and, and look, I'm looking at some of these nuts here and I can see, for example, and I get this as well, I can see yeah. that the brown ones there, that's thrip. Yeah. There's a bit of thrip, and then but there's plenty of green ones as well, which don't look like. And thrip's just cosmetic damage, really. Exactly. Because right. it's not going to give you a bad nut or anything. But I don't see any particular influx of, of weevil or anything else. No, and if we look on the floor. Yeah. Okay. You've had a the deck before, didn't I? This is this um, is um, but yeah. Look, this is some no shedding, real isn't it? Great sign of insect damage. Yeah. Where are we through? <laughs> Most people grimace when you do that, okay? I grimace, yeah. <laughs> there's no shell yet. Come on, right, look, yeah. there's your shell, okay? So, and so there's not, your nut in there. So we haven't got to shell hardening yet, have no. we? But it's very close. Yeah, yeah. 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 Christmas yes. time. Yes, um, it, it's got a way to go yet. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, you, you know the little macadamia nut borer, and you come across yeah. it, and you've got this hole in here, and you go, what on earth could have dug through this shell to get there? Uh -uh. Yeah. It because was it's, laid it's, it was before soft. the shell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you do those cards for macadamia nut borer? No. You don't do those? No. I, look, I am so freely... But that's an organic solution, that is. That is I, the, the, I understand the... that, but look, I believe that within my little monoculture here, I have a fairly good predator activity. Yeah. And that's because I've never gone through, since 88, yeah. Okay, and sprayed any chemicals. Yeah. I've sprayed fertilisers. I've tried to encourage the trees that way. And here's how much of a learning I am, Daniel. Yeah. Are you ready for this? I had people used to line up along Major's Lane there, okay, Yeah. just to watch this idiot. You're biodynamic, okay, well, or not, were, well, okay, no, or I, the farm I, was. The farm was, Okay, yeah. we're into the days of Rudolf Steiner, yeah. okay? All right, now you spray... Oh, you were doing 500. Right. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you spray at the full moon. Yeah. And right after, it has to be right after rain. Uh, yeah, right after rain and you spray it then and it, but, but no, the theory was actually fine. Oh, do you know? Beneficial microbes oh. and, and people are selling them commercially now. It's it's really just a commercial version of what he Absolutely. came up with. Right. Okay. But, but doing the cow's horn thing and burying it over winter and... We always yeah. used to call it multi-goblins. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, but... Let me give you the logic. Now, Stein is around 1900s. 1920, okay? yeah. Right. yeah. We're not exactly in a position where we've got light in an orchard to go and run around spraying, okay? Yeah. Hence the full moon, because evaporation at night is so much less. Of course. Full moon gives okay. you light, yeah. okay? Yeah. All right. There's not a lot there's of there's some there's some there's some happy coincidence with the ritualism. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I I get that. But and but but for you a know, while they, here, burying the cows. Oh yeah. Though, I mean, well, here's yeah. Looney Bruce. Okay. Yeah. I used to have a Rastafarian's briefcase attached to the bonnet of the tractor. Right. Okay. And what was in that? Um, the Rastafarian's briefcase was uh, that's your ghetto blaster. Okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. And I used to drive through when I'm spraying, playing. Sounds of thunderstorms, um, whales oh calling, birds, all of this other, okay, <laughs> yeah, I know, cloud cookie land. Yeah. Um, however, okay, I read and took seriously where music affects other living things than us. Well, it's, and it, it affects chooks. Sense. Yeah. Yeah, you know? but the, the in, just in terms of the balance, I I get the idea that if you spray nasties. You also remove a food source for the predators, Thank you. and you may also kill the predators with the same spray Thank if it's a, if it's a broad spectrum spray. And so the alternative method is you don't spray, you let the predators build up. They have a natural food source that doesn't go away because you're not spraying, and then whatever is left over in terms of crop you get. Right. So really, the the efficacy of that really depends on you getting some crop left over. Yes, it does. To harvest that is semi decent. Yes, it does. Yeah, and I mean, look, I can see here that there's some there's some very undamaged nuts. It comes cut back to left. the health of your trees. Well, it it does. Okay. I mean, here we go. Right. Here's it's some. It's like how it works in nature. For a while, I was a fisherman. Okay, you load up your bait to swim like a sick fish, yeah. not like a well fish. 
Do we know? Okay. Do we know what this one is? What do we know what, vari- no, what variety? What of variety tree? of tree? I'm going to go with a two four six. Yeah. See, it's, I mean, it's a normal size nut. I mean, a couple of them are a bit smallish, but if you look at look at the rest of them, they're well, they're, they're clearly not riddled by macadamia nut borer or weevil or anything else. If I get into so, a problem, then I can address it. But right. I'm not going to address a problem in anticipation of the problem. Have you ever introduced predators into yes, your I orchard? Have. So yes, lace wings, the European wasps. I did for a little while. Yep. Okay. Um, now. It's fine, okay, but I didn't want them to compete ultimately. My decision was it was only for a year. Yep. There was no huge advantage in it. Yep. Um, because I have four varieties of macadamias through here, the pollination is very successful with bees, okay? Right. Um, so that's first. Yeah. Um, from there, basically... Um, I don't really need to try and predict. And I've used things like, I, I said to you, with garlic Tea oil yes. or some cases coffee, which I've made into my own oil, okay? Right. That's meant to push things. I learned about a thing called a push-pull technique. Now, it worked beautifully for monoleptors, okay? Here okay. we go, all yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you know, they come in their gazillions. Yeah. They can, so, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, they're attracted to new growth. Somewhere I read that they expend a third of their energy in eating. Yeah. Hence, they want the soft, fleshy new growth. Yeah. And it's the colour that actually attracts them rather than a pheromone for this insect. Uh, okay, so think of pink, red, or the light new growth green, and yes. you've got it pretty well made. A oh. crepe myrtle is devastated by, okay, monolepids, really? for okay. instance. Y- yeah, yeah. Um, now, what I did originally well, and was as I planted roses. an avocado tree at the very top of the hill. Right. And I kept it looking sick. Yeah. Okay, in predators, predators go for the sicker ones, okay? They don't want yeah. a big bite, they're only after a meal. So, okay. People do this as trap crops. They yeah. call it a trap crop. Okay. Yeah. Now, I could identify with that pretty well what was going on in attracting monoleptors in particular. Right. And monoleptors will only really hurt a macadamia in flowering time. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. But the lace, I mean, the other big problem with flowering is lace bugs. Yes. Surely you get that. I have had on occasions. I've tolerated it for probably a ridiculous point in some instances. Yeah. However, um, basically it has never presented as a enormous crop damaging problem the way the Sagascus weevil did. All right. So getting back to that, the year before when you only got, say, 100 and something kilos of yep. nuts. The, the following th- year after my spray. What was your yield? Um, 7.8, uh, 7.892 kilos at 10% moisture. You mean tons, hopefully. Tons. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Tons, yeah. I mean. But that's out of this number of trees. That's extraordinary, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, and you're talking that's, about that's, your mate next door. <laughs> yeah, well, well, my, but yeah, look, look, my mate next door. The other half of the story is why he feeds very organically and he doesn't use any chemical fertilizers. He's very hard on chemicals. Right. He 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 still does diazinon, although you know that's that's about to, a yeah. particular avenue of pleasure is about to be cut off. Well, um, yeah. but but that which in February I think this this February twenty two, and it's been banned elsewhere in the world. We're a bit slow to ban that. Product. We are. Um, but that's um, yeah, that's look, that's a combination that works for him. He gets on top of the pests, and he's done a lot of regenerative farming that does a lot to the soil. He brings in a lot of organic matter, uh, wood chip that sort of stuff right um but you know there's there's limits to what you can do and you know you looking ahead to the future of the industry I, I wonder for how long we really can bring in large amounts of hardwood chip to put on our orchard floors i, I mean i know that it's a sustainable thing at all i'm not sure it's a sustainable practice but but if if not that then what do we do do we cut down camphor laurels and do that or or we well i'm i'm led to believe that the camphor oils don't do the soil any favours. Yeah, I, I worry about it too. I'm led to believe that. Yeah. Um, however, i got to tell you, okay, you drive along where they put in a new expressway or something, you see all these beautiful trees that go through a mincer. Yep. Okay, and you go, listen, with camphor laurels, for God's sake. The Chinese used to make 
chests for clothing out of them because insects won't go near the place. Yeah. I mean, can we not come up with some better uses than economic justification? Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, the, the crowd I got in to cut down, well, they, they were going to cut down campers in my orchard, but there they weren't enough big ones. They only, have, they only want the really big ones. Yes. But they sawmill it and send it to China. I... You know, well, I mean, we should be making furniture locally, but they're sawmilling and sending the board to China. They love it. You know, it's, it, 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 it is a premium furniture timber. Thank you, you. You go to any of those craft markets and the cutting board's made out of camphor for well, uh, 40 bucks a pop, you know. It's incredible. Un, uh, yeah. It really is. Yeah. So, you know, and we so, can be very silly. Yeah. In terms of, okay, so, so let's deal with the, the last remaining pest that's on my sort of worry list, which is fruit spotting bug. Yep. Right, that's prevalent this time of year. Um, that's a natural predator thing for you. Yes. Right. And yep. and I mean, I know that if I wanted to make lace the place wings, unattractive to them, yeah, I would spray some garlic oil. They don't like that. I know. Right. And it drives them away. And I've got plenty of other megadamias around me. Yeah. Um, I know that sounds awfully cutthroat. Okay. But well, you're you're in the middle. The insector to insector. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, but 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 you, I think, are in the middle of a bunch of conventionally farmed. I am macadamia orchards. I they're I they're some, all spraying. I have some third generation beekeepers who would adore yeah. putting their bees in here because they put their bees into macadamia orchards or avocado orchards yeah. prior to putting them into um, the. Lectospernum, which is the active honey flower that flowers for, manu after. for manuka honey, because yeah. macadamia and avocado flowers build strength in the bees. Right. Okay. Now they would love to come here. Hey, bad luck about the neighbours. You know. Well, they they forage up to five k's. No. So yeah. yeah. No. So do you ever bring bees in? No. And you I did once. And you don't keep them? No. Right. I, I did bring the bees in once. There was a fellow who wanted to keep them here. Yeah. And um, he didn't come back to tend them, and I believe that the hive was um, destroyed here. Right. Um, and if he couldn't be bothered to keep his bees, I didn't need to learn that craft because it's not another thing that I really need to do. Yeah. Well, well pollination's not an issue, really. In fact, it, it's the least of an issue for an organic macadamia farmer, I would have thought. Indeed. It's really more the pests and how you, you manage the food and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and okay, so these are the sort of 246 spreading trees. Where's um, where's a 508? Have Let's you go got... down to the very bottom of the hill. Okay. I was going to say... And you are looking for a tree with leaves that look like a dog's tongue. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. You'll notice that we've still got our serrated little pieces of edges on these. Right. But what we're Which sort of is sort of suggesting two four sixes. It looks much more like a dog's tongue. That's the right. best description I can give you. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly, I know that you know from from having looked so long to buy a macadamia farm for sale, it was only some of the really older ones that planted five oh eights. I think they got discredited by the time about the 90s and people stopped putting them in. Um, how do you find your performance from them? Actually, look, in all honesty, I haven't really differentiated between the trees in what they do. Okay. However, okay, now we're starting to get to look like, okay, you see what I mean? It looks like a dog's tongue. Yeah. All right. Whereas when we were coming down, you've got trees with serrations still along the edges. Yes. So I, I can see the difference. I can see the difference there. And they've got, oh, they've got some crop on. They look like slightly smaller nuts. Um, the or three, maybe. four, fours are the smallest nut that I have. Yeah. They are. Do you find them a bit biennial? Um, I can find that, yes, indeed. Right. Okay. The three, four, fours predominantly. Um, and you can tell because they're generally one of the first to drop. Yes, they're okay, really droppers. So yeah. you get this advanced warning. Is that a 508 as well or maybe a 344? Because it seems, it seems to fruit in bunches. No, well, he's not anywhere near a dog's tongue. I'm no, that's, three, that's four, a 344. Four, four. It looks and like it. look at its upright nature. Yeah. Okay. And you can see the fact that it flowers in bunches, which is what a 344. Uh, sorry, fruits in bunches, which is what a 344 yep. does. And you've not had to even prune these? No, no. 
Is it really because there's? I mean, the 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 six meter spacing between trees is unconventional. Yes. I mean, in the, at the time, people were planting four meter spacings and some of them three and a half meter spacings. And in Danoon, people got really greedy. Have you been out doing... towards Wine Wine Dam? With um, it was called McAdams Farm, I think. Yeah. And they spalliated the trees. Oh. All right. And these babies were three meters between the rows. Yeah. Okay. If that. But they went up to Billio. Yeah. All right, now, well, here's doesn't... where you get to watch the people who shave their trees rather than remove them for light. Here's where the learning yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Basically... The hedging, yeah. Okay. You, if you've hedged yep. and your fruit comes on wood that's two to six years old... Yeah. If you've hedged, basically that means one year... You ain't getting anything on there. Yep. And you know what happens when you hedge, everything bushes up. So you're allowing less light into this area. Yeah. I mean, honestly. It defeats honestly, the purpose. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I just can't. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean the, the, under the old wisdom, you would, in this these two rows we're looking at now, yeah. you would hedge through the middle to let a column of light in you would. and supposedly support ground cover. Correct. But the better view now seems to be you don't hedge. If you're going to prune, do selective limb removal and keep light in the centre that way. Well, down this row, if you can imagine, another row down the centre of here. Yeah, that's what they used to be. This was how it was planted. Yeah. And I can tell you, matter of fact, the trees were only 10 years old then. Yeah. They are now, where are we? Uh, they were planted in 83 and 84, okay? So, so they're coming up to 40 years old. Yeah. There's no mucking around here, no. okay? <laughs> it, it just shocks me how little they've grown height-wise. Now they've got the space to grow laterally. Ah, here yeah. you go. Yeah. I am on a southwest slope. Okay, not ideal. No, it's not it? okay. ideal. No, the particularly trees winter. at the top of the yeah. hill yeah. are shorter than the trees at the bottom of the hill, and the reasoning that I apply to it is: yeah, here are your winter winds from the southwest. We cop them straight from Gyra, man. I mean, Do like you? it's freezing. Yeah. Okay, so um, basically, I reckon that the strength of the wind yeah. keeps the tree from going, I don't want to grow into that part. I've got shelter here from all the characters below me. Yep. To a degree. Okay, I'll let my top fingers play around in the wind and that's about it. Yeah. Um I'm trying to No no I mean it's a, it's a decent you know. it's a decent theory. I look I don't I don't know. I don't know enough to, to work out if that's if that's right. Mm. But but um All I ever do is observe. Yeah. You know? As I said, I got the right to put it together wrongly. <laughs> you, you grow effectively. The the list of varieties you've given me are varieties with reasonably thick husks yes. and reasonably thick shells. Yes. Do you believe that protects those nuts against pest damage? I think it helps to minimise the possibility. Right. Um, if you've got an insect that's out there for its food source, okay, come on. Yeah. It's not going to stop. Um, even if it only takes a little piece, okay. Right. Um, now here you go. But if you if you were if you were picking trees to grow in a, and in, in an organic macadamia farm now, yep. pretend you had a blank field. I would go the Hawaiian varieties. You would. I would without any shadow of a doubt. Why wouldn't you touch the A's? Uh, only because I find them far more bland in taste. Economically, yeah. they're better. They've got a thinner shell. You get a 40-odd crack out with them rather than a 34. Um, you've got all of these incentives to do it. Yeah. But taste-wise, you line the two up against each other. I find that Robert McAdam, with those varieties that he's started through that, yeah. has a su sweeter nut. No, no, I, I look, I agree with you in the sense... I've tasted them and I can tell some taste difference between them. The A16s are a little bit on the bland side for me. Right. And the A4s, they're nice big nuts. But but just in terms of sustainability for organic farming as opposed to the taste. Okay. You know, is there is there any variety that you think people should be growing None for an organic farm? Um, let me give you a big difference with the A's and the Hawaiian varieties, okay? Right. And you can drive around and see this anywhere. Yep. Um, the A's are far more hungry than the Hawaiians. Yes. In every instance. Th that bit I get. And yeah. you will yeah. see A orchards 
that have the yellowing of the leaves and the deadening sticks, yep. which says, I'm not getting enough food. That's all it says, okay? I have those trees in my orchard. All right. Yeah, yeah. I so know. Yeah. they are voracious in comparison. Yeah. Um, I would still stick with my Hawaiians. But let me say, okay, I've had 34 years with these babies, yes. okay? Yeah. I, I am familiar here. Yeah. Um, so what I can apply on my little patch isn't necessary a generalisation that everybody can take. No, no, no. I'm just saying that people watching you are going yeah. to get, get some idea in terms of, you know, I mean, look, one of my closest friends would love me to be an organic macadamia yeah, farmer. Yeah, I'm, I look, I'm not going to do it. But, but I mean, feeding-wise, absolutely. I think, you know, if my neighbour next door on the same soil and the same conditions can get six and a half tonnes a hectare and I'm struggling to get two, you know, He's doing something right. He and is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's. I'm not going to spray diazin on either, but you know. Mm. So, but 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 having said that, you know, um, I, I think you know there's a lot of promotion now of thin shelled, thin husked varieties, there are. which my theory is probably are quite dependent on spraying and heavy feeding in order to perform. They're, they're, they're more like the A's if you want to put them in a camp. I agree with they're, you. They're more like um, the A's. but I'm unversed in the spraying, but logic would tell me yeah. that if you've got a thinner barrier, okay, it's going to happen that way. Yeah. And you have to ultimately think of protecting that thinner barrier. Right. So kernel recovery cannot be your top priority as an organic macadamia I wouldn't, farmer. No. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, yield, yes. You mean if you get more nuts thicker shell, it'll it'll cancel it. It'll cancel it, 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 it can offset it, okay? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to live like a king. That's really what it comes back down to. Oh, sure. You, you want to yeah. pop around in the Ferrari and everything, mate. Unless it's no a Ferrari conventional. Tra well, yeah. Ferrari tractors are okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'd love to get a Ferrari tractor just so that I could speak just to my the, just so I could speak to my barrister mates back in Sydney. Oh, I drive a Ferrari. Yeah, 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 yeah. just like you. Okay. Yeah. Well, here you yeah. go. Here's the yeah. heads up. Not a lot of people know this. Yeah. Okay. David Brown tractors. Right. Give me a car brand. Oh. Aston Martin. Yeah. DBS. D did they make DB David Brown? Oh. The original Aston Martin started off as David Brown tractors. So when you see one of those white old chuggers up on a hill, oh. you can go, that guy drives an Aston Martin. I didn't okay? I didn't I didn't realise oh, that. Mate. Yeah. Oh mate. Oh mate. Well, then you've, yeah, of yeah, yeah no, no, no. That's no, I, I, I love it. Yeah, but I've seen look Lamborghini and Ferrari tractors around here. I, I my, my mechanic says don't touch them and I'm look, I have enough trouble with my Antonio Carraro, so I have uh, Oh, have you got an Antonio Carraro? I do, I do. Wow. It's small, small it like most Italian vehicles, small, fast, powerful and um breaks down in style. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. I used to own an E-type Jag. Uh -huh. They pass everything but a mechanic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> I know. I know. No, I had a um, good mate who had an E-type Jag and he spent years getting it right and um, and uh, he took it out eventually. Everything got perfect and he took it out for a Sunday drive and someone ran right up the back of oh, him and, and crashed him. Oh, when the ambulance showed up, they saw him motionless in the car and they thought, oh, God, the poor guy's dead. He wasn't. He was just sitting there crying. Exactly. <laughs> he lost oh, his e type check. Mate. So there's some emotional connection. Oh, but, but I don't think I've got the same connection with my Carraro. It's cost well, me too much money. Here you, you go. Know. Okay. Yeah. Young Antonio has a little brother right. called Valpadana. Okay. Who was named Arnold Palmer? Yeah, I have an uh, I have a Val Padana. Oh right, as well as the John Deere. I was going to say, what what do you do? You harvest yourself? Yes, I have until this this year. I and I did, did you, this year right. to a point. Yep, and I found a harvester who I used to use about 15 years ago. Yep. He's since got a much better machine, one right. of your Ferraris. Oh, okay. okay. Um, however, he will go vertically for me rather than horizontal. Great. I always had the advantage of being able to, because I could mow with the John Deere. Yeah. I can mount it out the front, the harvester. I can mow at the same time. Let's you know where you Wow. Going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the Val Banana was originally bought for harvesting, and I'll show you why when we go up there. Okay. However, okay. Well, Let's walk up now. Yeah, because okay. I think we've probably seen enough of the trees. Yeah, probably have. Yeah. 
Um, and we'll just go straight up here. Yeah. Um, but basically, okay, um, the ability to mow when you're harvesting and prepare for the next harvest is I've just an absolute. I've never God heard thing. of that. That's well, you're meant to mow right after harvesting generally, so that you've got you're Saves not mowing you overnight, Thank and then you. you've maintained the harvesting surface. So obviously, I mean, I don't need to ask you this, but no herbicides in the in the tree row. Um, it, it clearly has never been. And here you go. There's no erosion in there where. Yeah. 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 I mean, for a slope like this, if you hadn't done major work, you would expect root exposure. But I'm just not seeing it, which is, which is good. It looks like there's cooch grass there. Yep. There's some more of that native ground cover. That doesn't get in the way of harvesting your nut, does it? No. Yeah. So that's no. that's pretty decent. And and look, um, the next thing is what you do with your nuts. As I understood it, you. You you that don't situation. always sell them for eating, or, or what do um, you? Yes, I do. Right. I sell the vast majority. Since I did that video with Dylan, yeah. Basically, my whole situation has changed quite a lot. Okay. Age obviously wearies one. Oh yes. However, okay. Circumstances as well. You're trying to juggle two things. Of course. Yep. You know the problem. So so premium kernel is generally for eating. Yes, it is. And, and I take the secondary crop right. to get my oil. So who processes the secondary crop and gives it back to you? The, um, the people who I sell the whole crop to. Yes. <coughs> they do the sort. They do the sort. Right. And as they're processing, you've obviously got mouldy, rat-eating, insect damage. All yes, that. yeah. I'm after immature and insect damage. Okay, and I'm what about what about discoloured crest? Because that's a big feature. It's fine by me. Fine by you for the secondary oh. stuff. It's because... only going to get cold pressed and turned into cosmetic grade oil. Yeah. So, so as I understand it, immature kernel stuff that drops early. Yeah. Doesn't have sufficient oil contact content for eating. To make it a magnolia. Yeah. And it doesn't have the taste. Correct. But it has oil. Correct. That's good. You know. Correct. And so is that processed by crushing it or, or what? Okay. Or is it shelled like any other? Yes. Right. They're all out of their shell. Oh, okay. There are little chiplets of shell. Right. In what I take. Yep. Okay. Now, when you think of a cold process. Yeah. The cold press. Okay. You're introducing something which when you crush it is going to turn to sludge. Right. And the machine has to get purchase on something. Sure. So the little chips of shell, really good to include. Oh, because it helps it helps chew, chew yeah. it up. Now this looks like a Carraro. This is? Oh, it's a Valpadana. This is Arnold Palmer. Right. Okay. Oh, and that's and like the like Carraro, you. it's reversible, yeah. Okay. The Italians love that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So there's the out front mower, clearly. The Machio. Uh, well. Out here, yeah, and it would go out there. Now, I originally bought this to attach a harvester onto here. Right. Which is where I can. Which is now got run a little bit of a lift. Tank from. Oh the yes. Top of those trees. Yep. And oh, that's a sylvan. Have, it's a sylvan like mine. Yeah. I'll have some you know, organic, bloody fertilizer. Your liquid fertilizers. Right. Everywhere the kelp, the kelp and stuff. Grass yeah. seed for when I've got rain coming out and go out and feed the chickens, so to speak. Sure. Out in the orchard. The out front mower for when the grass is and this harvest, really long. This harvest is an interesting <laughs> rig. <coughs> I mean, the finger wheels are on any harvester, but what does it then okay. put the nuts right behind it? Now I attach to the front of this. Yep. And as I said, I can mow at the same time. Oh, okay. I see. So the wheels are rolling on the ground. Yep. They fit the nut into here. I have hydraulics on there where I can, it doesn't work effectively, lift these wheels for turning. Yep. But with great difficulty, I get my way around. Right. And but, but the nut. This the... thing at the front right. will lift and tip. So I've got fish crates. Oh. Most people pick on those little tiny, okay? Yep. Fish crates, man. They're the greatest thing in the universe. I well, they're to strong. Them up across there. They're strong. Tip them into that. They're also. So, so, so hang on. Everywhere. This tips forwards, yes, does it? Yes, it does. 
on so hydraulics. I four of these along the front. Yep. Tip it forward. Then I take these out of the path. <laughs> but, last, and continue. but last and year you did that with eight tons of nuts. You did. A hundred kilos is a happier time for me. Right, right. But, you know, because there's a lot of weight in this. Yeah. By the time you get a hundred kilo odd in there. But a hundred kilos into eight tons. I know. You did this eight hundred times. Well, on top of that, okay. Yeah. I've got to pick these up, put them beside the tree, drive off, do some more, fill all of these, right. put them in the back of the trailer, bring them up here, then try and sort the leaf and the shite out of it. Well, that's okay. that's your fitness regime yes. looked after, isn't it? <laughs> Thank I mean, you. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, that's um, so. From there, okay. I've actually lifted, and these are about 35 kilo when they're sure when they're up full. to about there, okay. Right. Um, now I've lifted them once to the tree, second time onto the trailer, third time off the trailer, and eventually took them in the half ton field bins, which I bring in there out in what was the goat shed. Okay, so that probably answers my other question, which is how do they pick it up from you? Yeah, the, and, they, and that, that's the field bins. They've got forklifts, so I just I've yeah. got the fork um, driver. Yeah. I just wheel them out onto the patio here and they come and pick them up. And is this some of last year's crop, is it? Yes, yeah. it is. Still good? Oh, bloody beautiful, man. Here you go. Yeah. you like to try one? No, no, it's fine. I, I, okay. but I you um, were saying before with paste, all right? And yeah. I said it in that video. And look, even my agronomist says the same thing. He says the H2 is one of the best tasting macadamias you can eat. It is. A and, and it's a rootstock, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, I know. For, for most people, it's a rootstock. Yeah, well, it is, yeah. yeah. They yeah. either called it D4, which was your bushnut rootstock, or H2. H2, yeah. And did, did you. Um, it does stick tight a bit, doesn't it, H2? Yes, it does. Yes, yeah. it does. So, how, how much of the crop eventually does come down or does it just hang in the tree? Oh, no, no, no. The vast majority. You just get the odd nut. Right. Like, say you've got a racine with two or three nuts on it, okay, and covering the tree. Yeah. You'll find that the vast majority of them will drop their nut. Yeah. Okay, and you might wind up with one out of the two or three. Okay. That hasn't. On every few racines. Well, a, a third... Yeah, I mean a third is a fair few nuts, but yeah, but um, it's not a third overall. I can assure you. I mean the concerns with stick tight are one, you don't get crop, um, and two, it harbours fungus spores. Absolutely. How are you going with fungus? I should have asked I that. I have never had a major problem. Because um, H H two and two out of the ones you've given me, H two and two four six would be the most fungus susceptible. I hear five oh nine was all right. Five oh eight. Five oh eight, sorry, is all right, and three four four is well. Three four four is fairly resistant. It's yeah, bloody resistant. It's yeah, a to, resilient to, little tree. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I've got to tell you, I don't really have a lot of problem with fungus. A, I've got a lot of airflow through the shop. Yeah. That makes a huge difference, and it really does. Secondly, okay. Yeah. With, I, what's that? Um, what's the wine that's made with a fungus? On botrytis. It? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, I've, I've had a little bit of botrytis in times. That's on the flower, though. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, but everyone gets that. Yeah, you can't spray for that. Any, there's, there's no chemical spray for that. No. Yeah, but but I know that organic farmers are allowed to spray copper hydroxide. Yeah, copper oxychloride. Or copper oxy is it? And right. also Bordeaux, but you make your own Bordeaux. Right. But okay. but you've never had to. You've not had to do that. If I really, really, really wanted a yearly mango crop, I would do it on the mangoes. Yeah. That's about it. Okay. But otherwise. For, yeah. Um, and you know, as you and I agree, when them mangoes were on, it's mango boot camp. Yeah, we don't both know that. Yeah, no, my, my very first year at Nutkin Farm, I got I think we ended up losing about three or four hundred mangoes simply because the relatives got sick of taking home boxes of them in the car. And I thought, if I'm going to get this every year, I better find out something to do with them because the next two years I've had it zip, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's, you well, better, but if it rains, they're really like a, an extreme version of macadamia, is if it rains badly during flowering you just don't get a crop it's not gonna happen with yeah. mangoes yeah. yeah so basically that's really my macadamia is in there and stuff so it goes from the top of that block obviously from where the, the road the hill, is and i where the down grass to... is up there yeah i've actually got some of a little bit probably sort of half a ton maybe of chicken manure yeah and probably a good tons worth of basalt dust up the top 
And I'll come. I'll show you what the basalt dust does. Okay. Sure. Well, the yeah. size that I get it in. Yeah. All right. Because yeah. And here's a test for hand you. spread. Anytime. Is it hand spread or yeah? Yeah. Um, oh no. Well, um, the first spread come through. They might change their name since then again. Um, and they do it all. They've got I think GPS. This third spread. I think they're different to best spread. Best spread is what they're called now. Best spread. Okay. Yeah. Best spread's who I use. Yeah. Best spread is, is who everyone uses, but they're backed up to hell at the Thank moment. Thank you. Yeah. Same thing as trying to get chook manure. Yeah. Okay. Kingsborough are the only ones who deliver it. Um, it, the 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 fertilizer crisis is absolutely real. Oh, but I've, really I've done I've done some video commentary on that. But um, you know, some okay. of these chemicals that we have to get from Normally China. There's your aggregate that goes into roads. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's road now, base. Oh well. Here's the size basalt dust that I use. Okay. Here's two purposes. One, I use it to remineralize. But two, this size chip fabulous, works its way through the ground. Too, yeah. Thank you. It yeah. helps to decompact your soil. Yeah. I mean, phew, okay, it's just absolutely delicious. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, you I'm, put it through your veggie garden yeah. and tell me if your crops do not have a richer taste after you've had basalt dust in your veggie I'm just, garden. I'm just trying to work out what it's rich in. I'll have to go back and do my homework on that because I've, I've just not heard of farms doing that as a um, as a nutrition measure. Yeah, and yeah. I call it mineralising. Yeah. Okay, everybody fertilises, great. You know, we're all onto that doctrine. But well, this no, one, yeah. geez, this is the babies that aren't yeah. in your fertilisers. But, but even eco-growth are on your wavelength in that, they say that the minerals in their fertilizers are from rock minerals, right? So they're not they're not doing hot, they're not doing chemicals that leach. No. And I've got a very sorry. So yeah, um, with this particular dust though, I mean I'm, I do need to go back and do some research on what it contains because I just haven't seen it used as a fertilizer. Okay, and if method. I can give you where I, firstly, it was the Jungs who put me onto it, okay. Chris and Patty. Yeah. But secondly, and most importantly. I actually had witnessed it so many times when I was with Nine Sports and when they were covering golf. Uh -huh. And a greenkeeper gave me the clue out of the Australian Golf Club. He goes, mate, you've seen in the paddocks where you've got this really green paddock and they fed it with super foss. Yeah. Okay, super phosphate. So what we do, okay, to really get our green mm -hmm. and they get out, okay, um, you can see, I've got the chips specifically, yeah. but it's powder too, okay? And they get they yeah. get the powder yeah. and they put it on all the greens because it makes all the greens really rich green for the television coverage. Maybe that means it's iron rich. Anyway, we're just speculating. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. We're yeah. Speculating, but that was just an experience that I had in a previous life, yeah. which came back to resonate. Yeah, well, we use our experiences. I, I was a mad rose gardener. Oh, well, I still am. Oh. Um, back in Sydney and... Um, you know, I, I mean, I did my own experiment with the kind of feeding that I used to do, and I used to feed um, granular food yep. to the roses. And and look, roses are big feeders, so it's a real it's a real good test if you can feed roses something that is organic that they like that actually gives them sufficient nutrients. Then you know you're onto something good. And I did do the switch a couple of years ago from granular feeds. I I worked out I'd acidified the ground a bit, so. Applied some lime, started again with um, with manure-based products, and um, fabulous, you know. And and you you bring those experiences to you uh, to you uh, with you, I suppose. I mean, yeah. yours, yours was a media experience. It's hard to well, hard, hard to think how something would apply to macadamia farming from media experience. Oh, don't be me but, but it did. I, yeah, yeah. I got to tell you, the first time in the first cricket match down at Bill Reeve Oval in Hobart, yeah, there was a fellow called Tony Jones. I will always remember him. Okay, I'm sure his surname was Jones. But a Tony, huge man, huge. Yeah. Okay. Right. And he was the production outside broadcast manager down there. Right. And he said on um, day one to me, listen, Axe, do you mind if I go at lunch for two hours and the same thing with tomorrow's match for two hours yeah. because I'm president of the Rose Club and we have our exhibition this year. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. Now, yeah, yeah. as a unit manager. They, they, they okay. love them in Tassie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big blooms. He explained to me, it's the cold where you're going to get the big blooms Yeah. From. yeah. Okay. And... Um, so anyway, um, the beauty about you being a unit manager was when everybody else is on air, my job is pretty well 
Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. the road. Yeah. So I went down to where Tony's rose thing was. He was absolutely blown away. By the plants. He was blown away. Great. But he gave me such an education in roses that afternoon, it yeah. was beyond belief. Down to, here you go, you got all of your little, um, well, come on, I know the word, I can't think of what it is, on the buds, okay, the little insects that want to eat the buds. Aphids. Aphids, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And he goes to me, you know, everybody tells you you got to spray these things, okay? Yeah. I'll hose them off with the water, they can't fly. Yeah. Yeah, it's a temporary fix. Yeah, yeah. I, I sort of agree with him, but don't yeah. put the camera on it straight off. <laughs> ah, yes, no, no, I won't. I won't film that sign. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, keep it family friendly. Thank you very much. But, but look, thank, thank you so much for showing me the farm, Bruce. That's um, a real education, and and to get a perspective of someone who's been here, don't want to, you know, stress anything about your age. But to, for, for yeah. someone who's been here this long, through that pioneer period where sort of anything goes to the modern industry where you know funnily enough people are looking backwards to techniques like organic partly from consumer demand partly from working out what works and then to discover that you know farmers doing at least organic feeding are getting better results than the ones using chemicals um, it's important to capture some of that knowledge and put it out there so it really so, is. so you've made a contribution and thank you you know it was well a, there's a fellow called thomas sal who they banned from universities in America, I'm led to believe. But he sums it up beautifully, in my opinion. Yep. And that is, much of what we've pursued in the last 30 years has, to be, has been to replace what worked well with what sounds good. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I can't put it any better than that. Yep. And, okay, I hate with your barrister experience to actually take you to this, yeah. but can I put it any better way? <laughs> Prosecutors will, <laughs> prosecutors will be trespassed. I have to, I have to move closer to the sign. I think so people can see it. Where would you get this from? I had it made. Oh, you had it made. Oh, oh yeah, you must, you must have cared. Oh yeah. yes. Were people trespassing on your property? No, 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 no. I had some prosecutors approach me. Oh. And when people say to me, "Well, what happens when they're trespassed?" My answer is. They're about to find out. <laughs> ah, excellent. Bruce, thank you again. It's been lovely visiting you and, and learning your story, and I hope others will share the same as well. You'll see the movie up on YouTube shortly, and no doubt you'll get some comments. I'll look forward to that. Thanks. Good on you, Daniel. Thank you for coming. No, you're welcome.